we will continue our discourse on the five mental faculties. <clears throat> About out of five mental faculties, <clears throat> we should deal with panya, sada, viriya, siddhi, samadhi, and panya. Panya is insight, enlightenment. wisdom and knowledge <clears throat> but before I deal with the Sapanya I think I should <clears throat> explain to you the fight <clears throat> kinds of the tooth, the, the four kinds of the tooth. <clears throat> there are four kinds of the truth in Buddhism. The first truth is to be realized. The second is to be abundant or removed. The third is to be experienced. The fourth is to be developed. <clears throat> so the first truth is called Pranya in Bali. Prajnaya means uh, the Dhamma that must be realized by meditators. <clears throat> the second is uh, called Pahadabha in Bali. Pahadabha means here uh, the Dhamma that must be abundant or removed. <clears throat> and the third <clears throat> is the Dhamma that must be experienced by a meditator. <clears throat> The fourth, uh, the third is here, called Sachi Gattaba in Bali. The Dhamma that must be experienced. The fourth is called Bawe Taba in Bali. It means the Dharma that must be developed. <clears throat> so, when a meditator has realized the first truth, thoroughly realized the first truth, He will be able to remove the second truth. When he has abandoned the second truth, he can experience the third one. To experience the third truth. Meditator must remove the second one 
to remove the second one, he must thoroughly realize the first truth. To realize the first truth, he must develop the fourth one. In another word, <clears throat> if a meditator has fully developed the four truth, he is sure to realize the first truth. If he has realized the first, the first truth, he is sure to abandon to the second one. When he has removed the second one, he is sure to experience the third one. <clears throat> so, the point is uh, the first truth which must be thoroughly realized by the meditator. The first truth is nothing but nama and rupa, mental and physical phenomena. The second truth which must be removed is tanha attachment. The third truth which must be experienced it is the cessation of suffering, liberation. The fourth truth that must be fully developed is the Noble Eightfold Path. <clears throat> so to realize um, the first truth, which is Nama and Rupa, body man process, psychophysical phenomena. <clears throat> to realize this first truth. Here, the first truth. Why do we need to realize the first truth, Nama and Rupa? Because Nama and Rupa, body mind processes, is the truth of a suffering. All mental states are suffering, all physical phenomena are suffering. From the point of view of a, a meditator who wants to get rid of a suffering, <clears throat> this is what the Buddha said: all five aggregates of a grasping are suffering. All the five aggregates here means uh, the aggregates of rupa, physical phenomena, rupa khanda. The aggregate of feeling or sensation with nakanda. Aggregate of perception 
สัญญาคันดา aggregate of mental formations สังขารคันดา and uh, aggregate of consciousness วิญญาณคันดา when the Buddha delivered the first sermon, setting emotion of the wheel of Dhamma, Dhamma c h a k a p o t a n a discourse. <clears throat> He describes, this is the truth of a suffering. จะดีบิดูกะจะรับบิดูกะพยาดีบิดูกะมรณะบิดูกะสุขะปริฏิวะดูกะดมนัสุบายาสับบิดูกะอาบิเหสัมบิโยกดูกะบิเหสวิบิโยกดูกะยัมปิชนาลบดีดัมบิดูกะสังเกตินะปัญจุปารานักนาเดกาจัดปิดุกาบาดิสสัฟเรงจรับิดุกาดิเกสสัฟเรงพยาดิบิดูกะสิกเนสิสสัฟเรงมรณะปิดูกะเดติสิสสัฟเรงสุขะโอริสัตเนสปริติวะลัมเมนเทชันดูกะเพย์นดอมนัสะกรีฟอุปยาสะ desperation all these are also dukkha suffering a p i e h i s a m b i o g a d u k h o to associate with the unbeloved is a suffering p i e h i s a วิปยโยกะดูกะ to separate from beloved one is suffering ยัมปิชะนาลวัตติดัมบิดูกะ what ones does not get What one does not get, what one wants to have is a suffering. Then, eventually, the Buddha summarized all this is suffering in his sentence. <clears throat> in short, all the five aggregates are suffering. บาดดิเกสิกเนสสัตเนสวิริเพย์งรีเอสัตระอาอินคลูเดตเอินดิฟายเบอร์กรีเกตส์ดัตส์วันดิบูระสัตอินชิอัตอัลฟายเบอร์กรีเกตส์อัปกรัสปิงอาสัฟเรง So when all kinds of suffering in the world is summarized, then it's fiber aggregates. In another word, when all kinds of suffering in the world. 
can be summarized into two types. One is a mental suffering and the other is a physical suffering, that's all. This mental suffering and physical suffering is divided into five. Then it becomes five aggregates of grasping. Aggregates of physical phenomena. Rupakana. Aggregates of a feeling or sensation with nakanda. Aggregates of a perception, sanyakanda. Aggregate of a mental formations, sankarakanda. And aggregate of a consciousness, vinyanakanda. Here, the nama mental de consist and the four aggregates rupa physical de consist only a single one rupakana aggregates of a physical phenomena is only one the other fours are included and namakanda aggregates of a mentality or mental suffering. <clears throat> Feeling or sensation, mentality. Perception is also mentality. Mental formations is also mentality. <clears throat> Consciousness is also mentality. These are four aggregates are uh, mental phenomena, nama. <clears throat> In my previous talk, uh, yesterday's talk, I explained to you briefly the consciousness and its associates. The consciousness has <clears throat> the characteristics of a cognizing an object. It just cognizes the object. It doesn't do any more cognizing it. But there are 52 mental concomitants or mental associates that arises together with the consciousness. <clears throat> In accordance with the object, not all of 52 mental states or mental concomitants or mental associate arise together with the consciousness, but some more of them arise together with the consciousness depending on the object and depending on the mental attitude of the person. So, out of the 52 mental states, mental associates, or mental concomitants, the feeling 
or sensation, perception, the perception, are also included in these 52. So, of these 52 mental concomitants, the Buddha said, feeling or sensation is a separate aggregate. Vedana Khanda aggregate of a feeling or sensation. In the same way, perception is also a separate aggregate. Sanya Khanda aggregate of a perception. Remaining 50 mental concomitants, mental associates, are called mental formations aggregates of a mental formations. <clears throat> Sankara Khanda. So, an aggregates of a 52 mental formations, Sankara Khanda, context is included. Contact, volition, psychic force, attention, craving, lust, greed, hatred, anger, aversion, ignorance, conceit, jealousy, embrace, uh, sloth and temper, restlessness and worry. Moral shamelessness, moral fearlessness, all these mental concomitants are included in aggregate of mental formations. Sankara Khanda. <clears throat> Actually, to make progress in your meditation, I need not <clears throat> explain you in so much detail, but I would like you to have some knowledge of these things. That's why <clears throat> I told you to a certain extent. <clears throat> yes, these are fiber gates which are summarized into Nama and Rupa, mentality and physicality, are the truth of a suffering, which must be thoroughly realized by a meditator. If we say straight, <clears throat> straight way, we can say, these body and mind are the truth of suffering, which must be thoroughly realized by us. That's why we have to watch any mental states of physical process arising as it is. Our all mental states and physical process are have to be mindful of <clears throat> as they really are. The purpose is to thoroughly realize their true nature. Though, though we do not realize these mental states and physical process which constitute so-called a person or being, self. But they are suffering. So we may not accept <clears throat> the lower desire to be wealthy to be a president or prime minister. We may not accept this lower desire is <clears throat> suffering, 
But though we do not accept that this desire is a suffering, but it's actually suffering. Why? This desire arises and passes away. When the desire arises in us abundantly or intensively, then we feel uneasy in mind as well as in the body. That's a suffering. Because of the desire to be worthy, we have to work hard day and night to earn a great deal of money. There is also suffering, both mentally and physically. But we may not accept. Men must have the desire to get <clears throat> a world. Because of their desire, he is suffering, both mentally and physically. Though we cannot accept it as a suffering, it is naturally it's a suffering. So, the Buddhism is realizing neither pessimism nor optimism, but it's a realizing. We must see reality as it really is. In other words, we must see suffering as it, it is. Or we must see suffering as suffering is. Only when we thoroughly realize any mental phenomena or physical phenomena as suffering, we want to get rid of suffering and uh, we find out means and ways <clears throat> to free from this suffering. Then also, when we search for ways and means, we found it, we find it, because the Omnisian Buddha, through his, his personal experience, teaches us how a person can get rid of a suffering and also teaches us ways and means by which we can free from suffering. <clears throat> if we do not realize the suffering as a suffering, we won't be uh, we won't get rid of a suffering then we will be struggling and suffering in the ocean of suffering. Yes, sometimes the scripture uses the word, the ocean of suffering. <clears throat> the whole world is a, the ocean of suffering both mental suffering and physical suffering. That's why the Buddha said, this is the first truth, the truth of suffering, dukkha satya, is to be thoroughly realized, prajnaya. Only this dukkha satya, the root of suffering, body and process, is it thoroughly realized? We want to free from it. Then we want when we want to free from it. We have to find out what causes this 
both mental and physical phenomena, or what is the cause of this suffering, mental and physical. Then we rightly understand the cause of suffering, mental suffering or physical suffering, is tanna attachment. This is tanna covers all the senses of greed, lust, craving, attachment, grasping, love, and so on. So when we say tanna, the attachment, we mean so all these, the sense of these words, desire, lust, greed, craving, and so on. So this tanna attachment is the cause of suffering. We readily understand why, because <coughs> the Buddha teaches us Tanha or attachment causes all kinds of suffering. So tanha or attachment is the immediate cause of suffering. Then, why does the tanha arise? Why does attachment to <coughs> mentality and physicality arise? What is the cause of attachment? Then the cause of attachment is the ignorance. Ignorance of dukkha sajja, the truth of suffering. Ignorance of both mental and physical phenomena. <coughs> Causes attachment to arise. So, attachment tanna is the immediate cause of suffering. The ignorance is the original cause of suffering. Then when we do not want to have suffering, or do not want to suffer, we must do away with its cause. We must eliminate its cause. What's the cause of the suffering? The immediate cause is attachment. The or original cause is ignorance. Only when we are able to remove the original cause, there will arise the immediate cause tanna. When this immediate cause tanna has been destroyed, there won't arise any suffering at all. Then we get free from suffering. Then how can we remove the original cause of suffering, ignorance? Ignorance is called avijja, moha, and bali. Two words, avijja means ignorance, moha means ignorance. But these two words, are sometimes translated into, into delusion. Delusion is also suitable for the sense of more high ignorance to certain extent, or in some cases. 
ignorance, not understanding of the truth of the suffering, mental and physical phenomena, is the original cause of suffering. Then, when we are able to replace ignorance, avijja, with vijja, vijja is right understanding or realization. When the ignorance is replaced by vijja, right understanding and realization, then we can <clears throat> eliminate that original cause of suffering. Then we won't have any suffering at all. Here what we need is it to realize mental and physical phenomena or Nama and Rupa or to rightly understand this a dual process of a mentality and physicality. Then ignorance can be removed. then there will arise the original cause of the suffering. Then there, there is no original cause, there won't arise the suffering at all. When we realize Nama and Rupa, mentality and physicality, <clears throat> mental phenomena, a physical phenomena. We realize or we rightly understand it <coughs> in two aspects. I explain to you <coughs> briefly. One is uh, Sabhava Lakhana specific uh, individual characteristics of uh, nama and rupa, mental and physical phenomena. The other is general or uh, common characteristics of uh, nama and rupa, mental and physical phenomena. These two aspects of a uh, dhamma are very, very much important for a meditator to realize with the deeper concentration, which is a cause divine, continuous and constant mindfulness, which can be obtained by strenuous effort. <clears throat> So, <clears throat> the specific uh, individual characteristics I explain to you, so the specific uh, individual characteristics of the four material primary, primary material elements are the water, fire, and air. And also, I told you the specific characteristic of consciousness. Every mental state, every physical process, <clears throat> has its own specific and general characteristic. Uh, specific characteristic. But general characteristic here means uh, the characteristics that belongs to all mental states and physical processes are called 
generate and uh, common characteristics. They are nothing but anicca, dukkha, and uh, anatta. Impermanence or transience, suffering or unsatisfactoriness, and the uh, impersonal nature or no soul, no self. These three characteristics are known as the Samanya Lakana, general characteristics, are common characteristics of mental and physical phenomena. Every mental state has these three characteristics. Dosa has these three, Moha has these characteristics. Loba, desire, or craving, love has these characteristics. Tina Meda has these three characteristics. Oda Jakokujia, restlessness and worry has these three characteristics. In this way, all mental concomitants or mental states including consciousness, has its own specific characteristics. We meditate and know, realize, or rightly understand mental or physical phenomena. First of all, he experienced these uh, specific characteristics. But general characteristics, anicca, dukkha, and anatta, common characteristics, impermanent, suffering, impermanent nature, are rightly understood after he has realized the first aspect, specific characteristics. But only when a meditator has rightly, clearly understood or experienced these three general characteristics, impermanent, suffering, impersonal nature of mental and physical phenomena, then his meditative experience is in progress. Vipassana, insight, means here realization or rightly understanding of these three characteristics, general or common characteristics. So it's only at the third stage of yes, insight knowledge that meditator begins to rightly understand these three characteristics impermanence, suffering, and personal nature. But the impersonal nature or no soul, no self nature of mental and physical phenomena is a realized from the first stage of inside knowledge, but not clearly and fully. <clears throat> so, here what I want to tell you is, when you observe the painful sensation, it means uh, you are mindful of a weight and a kanda, the aggregate of a feeling or sensation. The aggregate of a feeling or sensation is also must be thoroughly realized as it really occurs. 
So, when a meditator feels a painful sensation, he is lucky. He has a good opportunity to realize the true nature of a Vedanakanda, the aggregate of a feeling or sensation. Suffering and personal nature. So the pain is not to be afraid of, but to be loved. Meditator must love the pain. It's his friend. That's what. That's why we. He needs to love it. Why? In ancient time, about ninth century, in Sri Lanka, at that time, the Sri Lanka, in Sri Lanka, Buddhism was very much a flourishing. Some commentaries say at that time, Sri Lanka was covered with the color of robes and there's no place where there's no arahan. Yes, at that time, one of a senior monk who was a practicing meditation, Upasana meditation, feels sick. His sickness is uh, the wind inside the stomach. If it's uh, very strongly moved, so he feels painful sensation stomach. He noted to uh, observe it, but it doesn't go away. Gradually, it becomes worse and worse. He also strives his best to observe it as it is, not in pain, pain, pain. But eventually, <clears throat> he can wear it. So he is mourning and uh, rolling this side and this side on the bed with a mindfulness, crying. Then one of his disciples who seemed to be an Araha, I think, requested to the senior monk, Panurasa, you are a good meditator. You need not give in this pain. You should strive to observe it. By observing the pain, realizing it's the true nature, you may make your progress in your meditation. Then the senior monks, who was ashamed of being requested by his disciple to go on with his practice. So he continued to Know the painful sensation, pain, pain, pain. Be impatient with it. Because he attentively observed the pain, attentively watched the pain. 
his mind more and more deeply concentrated on the pain. It penetrated into the pain. Then, because of a deep concentration, the inside knowledge arises and, and realizes unpleasantness of the pain. And then, one weeps of a sensation, unpleasant sensation after another, arising in passing away. As if uh, one layer of uh, unpleasantness comes up and then passes away, another layer of uh, unpleasantness comes up and passes away. In this way, he comes to realize the general characteristic of a painful sensation arising in person with a sensation. So it's a suffering. At that moment, because he realizes that this is just a pleasant sensation, which is ever changing, arising in person with. So he doesn't take that pain to be me or mine, to be a personal being. The pain <clears throat> is realized to separate from himself. There's a no location of the pain too. He lost the location of the pain. What he realizes at that moment is just such an unpleasant sensation. Waves of unpleasant sensation arises and then passes away one waves and after another, one layer after another. Here, when he realizes severity of uh, unpleasant sensation, the pain, this is he rightly understood the specific characteristics of dukkha virana, painful sensation. Anita Buddha Nupavana Lekhana Dukkha, Sukhilpcha said. The meaning is. Pain to sensation has as its characteristics the experience of undesirable tangible things. So he comes to realize the specific characteristic of the pain first of all. After that his type is best to Observe the pain. Then he comes to real, came to realize general characteristics: appearance and disappearance of the painful sensation, and it's a suffering, and also it's a neither a person nor a being. It is just phenomenon of a feeling or sensation. In a short time, his meditative experience goes up one stitch after another, and then finally he has attained arhatship, became enlightened eventually. Then the painful sensation also has a gone. He has become Rahan. When he has become, become a Rahan, he experienced the cessation of a suffering. The third truth, Niroda Satya, the third truth which must be experienced. When he can experience the third truth, the cessation of suffering. 
because he has fully developed the fourth truth, the Noble Eightfold Path. The Noble Eightfold Path, as you know, some are dead to right understanding. Here, I readily understand the pain and two aspects. Sama Sangappa, right thought. Sama Vajya, right speech. Sama Gamanta, right deed. Sama Jiva, right livelihood. Abstaining from bad speech, bad deed, and bad livelihood. It means uh, Sama Aj, Sama Vajya, Sama Gamanta, Sama Jiva, right speech, right deed, and right livelihood. Then he strives the best, put enough effort in the noting. That effort is a sama vayama. Then the mind is very sharply mindful of the pain. That mindfulness is sama's deed. Then the mind was concentrated on the painful sensation very well. The concentration is Sama Samadhi. There are eight factors of uh, the noble part is included in his observing of this pain. So, because he has fully developed this noble eightfold part, he comes to realize the painful sensation, the truth of suffering. And two aspects. First of all, specific characteristics, then general characteristics. Here, the truth of a suffering, feeling, unpleasant feeling, sensation, is thoroughly realized by himself. So he doesn't take this is a painful sensation to be me or my opposing or being. He just see it as a natural process of uh, mentality and physicality, which are rising personal way of changing. Then there won't arise any attachment at all because he doesn't take the painful sensation to be a personal being. So realization of a specific characteristic and general characteristics of this painful sensation removed the attachment. Then uh, the second truth, which must be abundant. Then, because there's uh, no tanna, there won't arise any suffering at all. Then he experiences the cessation of a suffering, the third truth, Niroda Satya. The second truth is a Samudhiya Satya, the cause of a suffering. The third truth is Niroda Satya, the cessation of a suffering. So here, this senior monk. <clears throat> had a very good key to open the door of Nibbana, the truth, the cessation of a suffering. What's the key? The key is a painful sensation. That's why I said, if a meditator has a painful sensation, he is very much fortunate to possess the best key to open the door of Nibbana. But he needs a great deal of patience so that he can observe the pain. <clears throat> I think you are also <clears throat> uh, you also may be the persons or meditators who can attain the cessation of a suffering 
deliverance from suffering with the key of a painful sensation. Then, shall I ask you a question? Is it the pain? Is it to be loved or to be afraid of? Hey. How do you think? To be loved, so you must love as you have lover. <laughs> In every city. <laughs> yes. May all of you rightly understand how the painful sensation is a helpful for you to attain the cessation of suffering and to try your best in attaining Nibbana liberation.